I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, welcome to Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. I'm so happy that you've been able to join us for today's very special conversation. By popular demand, my guest joining me for today's show um, is my very special husband, Wesley Wright. <gasps> welcome to the show, Wesley. Thank you, sweetheart. It's good to be here again. <laughs> It was, it was amazing, literally all of you out there. The first time Wes and I did our, you know, our first discussion together, we got inundated with communications mm. from people. Literally, we had hundreds of comments, hey, and emails yep. and people asking questions and asking for us to do more together. So we're actually going to be having our second raw and real conversation with each other today and just begin to go through some revelation that the Lord's been giving to Wes recently. We were having this conversation the other day, and it actually covers some of what some of you guys have written in to find more out about. So I want to dive in, Wes, and just talk to you a little bit about, um, what did we call it? It's like the calling journey, really the different seasons that you go through as the Lord takes you on a journey into preparing you for what you are on planet earth to do and to be and, um, and what that might look like. I mean, I think I'll probably jump in after you've begun, you know, and just share my bit as the wife of a reformer <laughs> as well, which is not for the faint hearted. <laughs> as many of you guys know out there, if you are married one way or another, or you're, you're walking closely with people who are really called to reform society, do social justice works, call to the marketplace. It's, it's quite a journey with Jesus. Um, but yeah, so we'll, can we start there? Wes, will you just begin to share some of, um, of what the Lord's been giving you with regards to the seasons of your life as you get prepared to, to walk in the fullness of your calling? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I might just add that um, this time I was not strong-armed to come onto the show. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, it's a pleasure it to be now, here. Aren't um, you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, I mean, some of you will, will have heard some of my backstory, so I'm not going to go over much of that, but um, some of you may not. And, uh, and I learned very, very quick that you, you can't trust someone you don't know. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and you can't know someone you don't spend time with. And you can't know someone you don't hear. <laughs> so, so you have to know what his voice sounds like to be able to hear him. You have to know what his presence feels like to experience him. And so there was a 10 year journey of where he took me on lots and lots of different processes and uh, encounters with him to start to teach me to learn and to know what his voice sounds like. Um, I'll, I'll give you one funny little illustration, which was, um, I went through a season where he would tell me about parking spots. And uh, so there was one time where he told me there was a particular parking spot in my road. Now in my road, um, there were three parking spots for about 45 houses. So it was rare that you'd actually get one of those parking spots in that road. You'd have to go off around the local area. And at this particular time, it was in Cheltenham and the race week was on. So the population of Cheltenham was doubled. So there were cars parked all on the pavements, all over the road, strewn everywhere. Uh, and, and I'd actually got a parking spot and I left the parking spot. And I then went to do my things and I came back late at night. And as I was driving down the road, I heard the Lord's voice very clearly. He said, would you like a parking spot? And I thought, well, that would be rather nice because I don't have to then park half a mile away. And so, so I said, yes, okay. And then I suddenly realized, hang on a minute, it's race week. There's never going to be a spot there. It's just too busy. They're parking everywhere. And then I stopped myself and I went, hang on a minute. If the Lord is asking me something, then he's not just doing it for a joke. So I said, okay, you know what? If that's you, Lord, which I believe it is, I'm going to say, yes, I would like a parking spot. And so I turned the corner 
and there were cars lining all the road, couldn't see any parking spots. And then as I approached where I parked before, that parking spot was open. And that was five hours later. So there were hundreds and hundreds of times where the Lord spoke to me like that. And then, you know, what would seem incidental and small, but when you cumulatively add those up over a 10 year period, literally hundreds, if not thousands of instances where the Lord had said something, it would seem a bit difficult to believe. And then it came through. So that was the start of my journey was learning how to trust God. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's essential, isn't it? It's absolutely essential that like you say that. And I obviously watched you then walking in obedience to give away to sow effectively mm. um, the millions and millions that you had made in your property business over yep. the years out of love for God, out of your relationship with him and out of the trust that developed in your yep. heart because of that intimate connection and the fact that like you say you'd spent time with him you know you'd mm. really gone deep and so that foundation was there so how long would you say it took you to begin to make sense of the journey that then began to unfold as you started to live in some of the consequences of your obedience that wouldn't Right. perhaps what you'd initially <laughs> expected <laughs> well exactly <laughs> well you know i would say it took years yeah literally years um because when i when i agreed with the lord um uh to do his request you know to stop paying the mortgages and to actually engage a process which was to be I like to think of it as a kingdom investigator. You know, I was investigating the world system close, uh, up close and personal, toe to toe, face to face. Yeah. And, um, and I was going through lots and lots of different enforcement processes and experiencing what it was like to be on the receiving end of the world system. Um, so in order to engage that process, I had to have a level of trust where I believed that God would, you know, take care of me and look after me before I started it. Now, the one misconception that I had, which I didn't realize and was later clarified by one of Bill Johnson's sermons, was authority is different to power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I learned this very, very harshly. I knew that I knew that I knew that I was called uh, almost to be an oracle in the world system, you know, standing for what is right, standing for what is truth, standing for what is righteous standing for what is fair and so i knew the lord had called me i had many many times many encounters many prophetic words as you know people used to clamor over seats at, at meetings to come and give me a prophetic word that would align with what the lord's called me to do everywhere um, so, we went <laughs> yeah it, it was remarkable for but, but years. That's, that's the kind of that's the kind of you know kind confirmation of. encouragement that a reformer needs to be able to start the walk of a reformer's walk because yeah. it's not a walk in the park um, it, it's very difficult. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I engaged that process with the Lord. And what I realized when I, when I first went into the court, I went in there, knew that I had the authority to be there, but thought that power was authority. And I thought authority was power. And I got absolutely bamboozled in that first hearing. I'd been in the courts before as a police officer but I'd never seen the teeth of the system and it's very different. And it literally took me like a rag doll and whacked me around the court and spat me out. And that coupled with another experience that I had, which I wasn't prepared for. I'd been a police officer then for about 12 and a half years. I'd worked with lots and lots of different police officers and I'd actually made a complaint about one of the instances that I was involved in to the police. And two days later from that court hearing, I went into the uh, CID office and I had, a, I had, a, I had a, um, an appointment with the uh, inspector. And so I was told to wait in the office until the inspector came down to review my complaint. And um, yeah, I sat there for half an hour and not one of the officers spoke to me. I spoke to the officers, but they wouldn't speak back. And I was completely ostracized. And so there was another lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that 
when you start a reformer's calling, you tend to be ostracized as well. And I, I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't realize that people would come under fear and they would bow to fear and they would do all kinds of things you'd never dream of people doing under fear. Um, and so, yeah, authority is one thing. Power is another thing. And I thought they were the same thing. And I realized that they weren't the same thing. I realized I had the authority, but I didn't have the power to enforce the authority that I was walking in. And that that was a journey that the Lord was taking me on to learn how to acquire the power to then be able to enforce that authority that he'd given me. Yeah. I think that it's, a, it's hugely important that, isn't it? And, it? and it does require a life of being laid down in submission and surrender and trust to the Lord where your relationship is genuinely authentic and he, you're allowing the Lord to purify your character and really refine you like you yeah. say all on that foundation of trust so that you can begin Absolutely to on trust steward. yeah yeah so you can begin to steward a level of power without damaging people with it so it's well, entirely well, not about yourself it's about building the kingdom that is, of god that that's a really important point sweetheart which is to be entrusted with power uh yeah. i, I think i don't think the world system tends to entrust power the lord entrusts power he does. And there's a very different, there's a big difference between power just being forced on someone or, um, you know, acquiring it through a process of force itself. Yeah. You know, the, 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 just because power is something that can force something through doesn't mean that that power is right. If it's not authored in love and it's not bridled with love, it will always produce carnage. No. And then starting to learn how, how, the training process operates is also very interesting. And, and you touched on the point earlier about what revelations the Lord has been speaking recently. And I, 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 to a certain extent, wish that I'd have known this at the start of my training process with the Lord because his request for me to stop paying the mortgages and go into a whole process in the legal arena and the financial arena was actually the next stage of my training process. And that spanned a period of maybe 10 or 12 years of training. <laughs> very hard training. I went into that training process thinking that that was my calling, thinking that authority was power, and therefore thinking that whatever I touched, I would succeed in. <laughs> and by succeed, I mean win. Mm -hmm. And it was only last week, we're talking 12 years on, that the Lord actually enlightened me as to what the training process was all about. I and mean, we're talking years and years and years on. And yeah. so I share this to people who are going through a process of training. You know, we've heard it, training for reigning, haven't we? You know, mm -hmm. um, and, and in it, it is, it's training for reigning. And the reigning part is actually walking in your calling. Yeah. And that's been entrusted with influence, being trusted with power it's in the, from power on high like the disciples were yeah. um and <laughs> i mean look it's so common sense looking at it now but i hadn't seen this for the whole period of the training process and and, and you know i'd lost and lost and lost and lost and lost i only had two wins in the whole 10 or 12 years of going to court hundreds of times very hard process and and, and i thought i was going to win all the way because i thought it was my calling um, as you do if you think you've got the authority. Right. Um, and what the Lord said to me was, uh, he reminded me of one of my main sports as a child. And I used to be a swimmer when I was a, a youngster. I used to uh, do competitive swimming at weekends. And um, he reminded me of the training process to become a better swimmer. And he said, um, so what was your training for when you were swimming? I said, well, it was to get stronger. It was to build stamina. It was to build your sort of character so that you can, you can, you can be self-motivated. And because in the water, you can't really hear anybody else. You can't see anybody else. It's just you against you. And then you only find out at the end whether you've actually met, met the time you're trying to, to achieve. So he reminded me of that. And he said, did you ever win any trophy in your training season? <laughs> I said, no, that wasn't the point. And the Lord said, you know, and I love it when Bill Johnson makes a point. He stands at the pulpit and he'll stand there and he'll be quiet for a second and he'll kind of just gently nod his head until the penny drops with people. And that's what the Lord did with me. He just sat there and waited. And I went, oh my, I've never seen that. 
training is not about winning in the form of success in the worldly sense in the training process. It's to build the stamina. It's to create the experience. It's, to, it's so that you have enough in you that when you are put in the race, you are prepared for the race to win the race. Yeah. Now, had I understood that, it probably wouldn't have been as difficult a process, but I didn't, I didn't know that. It was just last week. <laughs> so I share that with humility to everybody because, you know, and also as an encouragement that if you are going through your training season, which could be a month, it could be a year, it could be 10 years, it could be 12 years like mine was, or longer, that the training period or the training season is not about a worldly sort of position of success or winning. It's about the inward character building, the forming of strength, the forming of power, so that when you step into your calling, you are fully prepared to run and win the race. Yeah. It's just so powerful what you're sharing, Wes. I mean, from my perspective, just to be vulnerable family. Um, Wes and I had been, we got married in 2012, as you'll have heard if you watched the previous show. And just shortly thereafter was when Wes began to step out in obedience, which you all, you know, which he shared. And, um, and our life went from being really nice <laughs> to absolute carnage in a matter yeah. of months. And it was crazy pressure. And so I'm trying to discern, is this warfare? You know, what the heck is going on? Is it, you know, has Wes missed it? Is he, because I could see the depth of intimacy, you know, and the level of faith that he had and the encounters that had undergirded it. His, his determination, you know, even like, um, you know, um, John Wesley and, and Wilberforce and some of the reformers that, you know, gone in, in, in days gone by where they described being compelled by the love of God. You know, they believed absolutely that Christ's love could re reign supreme in your heart, you know, and that was yeah, the motivating absolutely. power behind the reformers' life choices. I could see that in you. But I'm thinking man this is like crazy <laughs> and so I said to the Lord one day okay what time is it in Wes's life uh, meaning in the calling journey you know what time is it and expecting to hear him go oh he's just going into the palace now you know, we're going to bring the kingdom across the nations of the earth and set people free from debt slavery and all the rest of the things that Wes is called to and, um, and I heard the Lord as clear as a bell, and he said to me, he's just gone into the prison using Joseph's life as an analogy. It took me about three days to accept that that's what Jesus had actually said. I knew he'd spoken it, but I'm like, no, no, my beautiful life has just been blown up. And so then, and then the Lord said to me, trust me with my son. And when he said that to me, he gave me grace to rest on the inside. And so, and it was also an invitation, right, Wes, for me to go deeper into Jesus being the strength of my life. I mean, at that time, I thought I was doing pretty well. I was kind of quite spiritually strong. <laughs> and then I married Wes. And so I went deeper myself to be able to really uh, stay strong in the, you know, and stay in peace in the midst of it's, the decisions that I, you were making. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you, I think you, you, you've been amazing. And, you know, the Lord has definitely given you a grace which you needed. I mean, Christ, yeah, I needed grace too, and we all needed grace you for what did. we were going through. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's, we, we, we tend to have a, a slight misconception in the Western church that when you're called of God, everything will just come together and it will just be fine and it will all work out, you know. Right. And, and yes, if, I guess if, in the end, but there's this sort of, yeah, when you're in, when you're in God's, God's line, that's it. It'll just fall into place. And I actually was very moved by, there was a gentleman that, um, he, he traveled about three and a half hour journey to come and sit with me in a waiting room before I was going into court. Oh, yeah. And he asked me a question. He said, why am I here, Wes? And I said, well, you've come to, you know, you've come to just support me. And, and uh, it's very nice that you've come to sit and just wait in the waiting room. Uh, there was a bunch of criminals there and what have you. And um, uh, because it was a, it was a, um, that was a criminal court, uh, magistrate's court. And, and it was nice to have company there, um, you know. Um, and 
He said, yeah, well, that's a given. He said, but what's the real reason I'm here? And I said, I thought that was the real reason. He said, nope. He said, I'll tell you what the real reason is. He said, there's a type of misconception in the church that if you're operating and walking in your calling, then everything goes just right. He said, but if you look in the Old Testament and you look at the prophets of old and you look at those that were called to reform society and influence, he said, they went through pretty difficult times to, for their training process. And he said, and I'm here today to honor you because I see the authenticity of Christ in your life. Wow, I remember that. Now, if that isn't an encouragement to then go into court from, <laughs> I don't know what was. I mean, it just absolutely yeah. blew me away. I was so encouraged by that. So beautiful. I remember that moment. Mm. And it was a kiss from the Lord. Yes, from a very precious man who's another friend yeah. of God. And yeah. I remember, um, yeah. yeah, over and over and over, I've watched you in your expression becoming love. And I think for anybody called by God to do a work that is really of the kingdom, that's the mark, isn't it? In the end, like yeah. you said at the beginning. It all has to be rooted and founded in love for yeah. love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and actually just to share a bit of encouragement, I am now starting to step into my calling. Um, Big time. The, the end phase of my training started about four years ago, and I'm now starting to step into the realms of calling and the individuals, the organizations, the kingdom projects that the Lord has me working in are absolutely amazing. And oh, yeah. I can see God's heart fully beating in them. And it's, yeah. it's so encouraging. It's invigorating. It's, it's, it's healthily challenging. Um, but the possibilities, you know, you just look at this, you go, oh, my goodness, people will be able to taste and see that the Lord's good through this structure we're building. Yeah. And, and that just thrills my heart. Yeah, absolutely. Seeing true economic systems being put together by people yeah. motivated by love. Literally, it's also a process of identity. Yeah. Because, you know, to sit in positions of power, we must be in our identity in Christ. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll only reproduce what the world has reproduced. And that, that's just useless. In fact, it's abusive. We don't want that anymore. We actually want no. Christ's nature to be fashioned and formed in all that we do, whether it be business, family, whether it be fun, you know, it, it needs to permeate the whole of society yeah. because then love will not just have its say, but then love will actually be a, yeah. a canopy over everything and everybody. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, and I think another big part of what's happened to you is that through all the hundreds and hundreds of court cases and all the experience that the Lord's taken you through, you have seen up close and personal why things don't work, what needs to be yeah, done differently. There's a very sophisticated level in complex matters of law and finance and banking and eco yeah. economics. And very, it's very, com it's, it's very, very complicated. complicated and it doesn't need to be so complicated. No, no. But you can tell the difference between something that is not rooted Mm -hmm. in the Lord's heart and something that isn't. And the Lord's given you a very finely tuned discernment, has need to know what has authored, what powers yeah. have influenced, what expressions of business in the world today, which is hugely important because we need to be very discerning. And the world is, I, I see this, I get so encouraged because I think you guys, all the reformers that are coming online, what's being built now is the kingdom that cannot be stopped. The Lord's preparing the earth for his return. And we all get, privilege to play a part in it it's so we amazing we do indeed so amazing yeah, it is, it's Whereas in finishing i can't believe how fast that time's gone wow. please can i ask you to pray for people just in closing who are maybe they're in this right now and you guys can't make sense of your life this is just to encourage you to as yeah. you keep prioritizing your relationship with jesus and intimacy with him it's the wisest thing you can ever do with your life because your life calling will flow out of your intimacy with him father thank you for this time thank you for my amazing wife thank you for these podcasts and i thank you for every individual that's watching this show and lord i pray a special blessing for everybody who's watching this show whatever part of their calling whatever process they're involved in Lord, I ask grace sufficient for the day for them. And I also ask for understanding of where they're at. I also ask that they would have clear, clear ears to be able to hear what you're saying. 
that the encounters that they would have with you would be uplifting, encouraging, recharging, reforming. And that most of all, that they would be able to hear your beating heart of love and feel those beats and walk to those beats and work with those beats. That the beat of your heart of love would be the very sustenance, the very foundation, and the very energy and power that propels them forwards. So I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we agree. We agree. Amen. The, the Lord has put strongly in my spirit the phrase, and when you were praying, where is that intimacy produces fruitfulness. It, we're supposed to live in union with Jesus in that experiential, simplistic intimacy. And then you'll go on the ride of your life. <laughs> but he gets glorified in the end. He gets glorified, you know, and, and, and it really, truly, you know, becomes, it's really not about us. It's about Jesus revealing his love on earth in partnership with us. So we don't do it for our own glory in the end. We just do it because we love him and we love people. And it's our greatest privilege. So thank you, Wesley Wright, for having a conversation with me. It has been really good. And just if, if any of you, if you know people that are going to be empowered um, by today's conversation, please do like and share and get this, this content out on your social media. To, to people need it right now particularly and especially if people are called into the marketplace or in difficult times hopefully this will really serve to encourage you and enc encourage them so thank you so much for being with us today have an amazing week and we bless you we bless your life in jesus and look forward to being with you again next week goodbye <laughs>